All right, and welcome back to TWIP, This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Joining me today or this week to discuss some of the cool things going on in the world of photography are Ms. Darlene Hildebrandt and Mr. Jeffrey Quattaro. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, hey Frederick. Hello. Darlene, it sounds like you are raring to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> You just get wild I'm horses. Up. I'm revved up, ready to go. <laughs> You're redlining over there. Yeah. That's cool. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna go real quick on this because there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, Darlene, I want, let's let's let you go first. What's uh, what's been happening in your world? Well, uh, we were talking off camera that uh, I haven't had a day off in like two months. Self-imposed, self-imposed. <laughs> yes. But, okay, I kind of took the day off yesterday. It was Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada, so I did go for the turkey dinner. You know, my mom cooked the turkey dinner, made the pie and everything. So um, I do. I did have the turkey, and I got leftovers in the fridge, so that's all good. Yeah. I'll, I'll be eating that after we're done. And um, I've been I've been working my butt off on getting a new course out for um, that'll be on sale on my website. It's mm -hmm. um, portrait lighting on location with Mr. Bruce Clark, who is part of TWIP as well in the back end of things. And, Seem to be um, in the front end of things, actually. He will be in the front. He is in front of the camera, and uh, we had a lot of fun building it, but. Uh, Honestly, I, I would just say if you're ever building a product that you're going to sell, especially a course like this, t think about how much time you think it's going to take and times it by about 20. Like, yeah. I'm not kidding. It's just been a lot, a lot of work. So we've been putting a lot of effort into that. And we're getting ready to get out of here. By the time this show goes live, two weeks, we're out of here to Nicaragua. We got nice. to come with us. Yeah, we're super excited. That's cool. Well, I can't wait to see that product. I, I saw the preview, and we talked about it on previous episodes. And, you know, from both of you guys, I know there's been blood, sweat, tears, fingernails, everything put into making this thing. And you say, you know, whatever you budget for time-wise when you build one of these to multiply it by, you know, a factor of 20 or whatever, I would say that goes hand-in-hand hand with the level of artisanship and attention to detail that the people that are building it have, right? Because normal humans would have been done probably two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> you guys you guys are polishing and doing all that stuff. So well, I, I figure I'm personally about 600 hours in myself. Wow. Plus I have the video team that shot it and edited it. I've got my husband who's my IT guy doing the back end. I've got a designer, a proofreader, and Bruce's part. So, I mean, we're probably... 1,000, 1,500 hours into this project, man hours. Oh, wow, yeah. So I encourage people to head over to your site to check it out just to see what that kind of manpower looks like. <laughs> that is, that's insane. We've, we've got a few people that are testing it right now. These were our early bird testers, so they were keen to get in early, and um, we're getting some good feedback, so they're liking it. Very cool. All right, well, congratulations. All right, we've got Mr. Jeffrey Totaro on the site as well, or on the show. What's going on? Hey, you know, Frederick, uh, thanks for having me back on the show. Always a, always a treat. And uh, Darlene, nice to see you again. I think we, last time I was on, we were on together. So mm -hmm. nice to see you. And it's funny, I didn't even realize it was Canadian Thanksgiving yesterday. And what did I do? I cooked turkey. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sympathy baking. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I had to put one on the big green egg, you know, just to test drive it for, for our Thanksgiving, which is coming up. That's um, not the big green egg. I've heard of those. <laughs> but, oh, it's great. Yeah, definitely good. Um, but I've been, been real busy. It's a definitely a busy time of year for me, September, October, November. I've uh, been running around. down in San Antonio, Texas last week uh, for, for two days doing a shoot down there, one of, the, one of my healthcare clients, and uh, certainly managed to find some good barbecue. That's always a, a priority when you go to Texas. Yeah. So that, uh, that, that worked out great. And um, I have some other trips coming up. Um, doing a trip uh, in about two weeks to St. Louis for uh, one of my retail clients shooting a new store there mm -hmm. and um, going to DC this coming weekend and got a few jobs in New York coming up and then going to LA right before our Thanksgiving so it's just a it's not crazy hey, time. We're, we're going to be <laughs> hanging out in uh, in New York at Photo Plus Expo, right? Tell me you're coming to Photo Plus. I, I, well, I, do, I do plan to be there probably are you still going to be there on Saturday? I will be yeah. Yeah okay great. Well I plan to be there on Saturday. I'll be back from the St. Louis trip on Friday night so Okay. Um, hope to make it. Hope to make it up to New York at least. I, I haven't missed a Photo Plus show, and I want to say like I've been to every one that since I've been paying attention to this. So it's probably like eighteen, almost twenty years. Wow! <laughs> wow. If they've even had the show that long, so because wow. I went years and years before I became a professional photographer, I was just going a lot to sniff out the gear and stuff like that. So that's uh, great. Yeah, it would be great. It'd be great to finally meet in person. So 
Good. Cool. Yeah, definitely. And just quick updates for me. Photo Plus Expo coming up. I'll be there October 29th through the 1st or the 2nd. So uh, October 29th through that Sunday. Jeffrey, I'll take off that Sunday morning, I think. Okay. Um, and then um, I'll be speaking in the Panasonic booth, and they'll be giving away a Lumix GM5 mirrorless camera. So head over to thisweekinphoto.com and uh, look at look under our events area, and you'll see that uh, that appearance. Click on that, and then make sure you're on the list to uh, to be pulled from that or to to be in that drawing, um, because otherwise I'm going to keep that camera for myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be dumping That's a out cool the camera, thing. man. I'm sorry. I may have to sell my GM1 to get that one. It's a cool little camera. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's jump into the show. But before we do that, I want to thank our first sponsor for this episode of This Week in Photo, and that's Squarespace. To jump into the news, the first story is about a new social network that's not so new to some people. Some of friends of TWIP have been on there already, staking their digital claim and uh, sort of starting to build their networks. It's the, uh, it's the Wild West again with a network called ELLO, E-L-L-O. So it's, a, it's an interesting network in that it, some people are calling it the anti-Facebook because where Facebook represents kind of an operating system almost in terms of the number of features that it has. Ello is strictly minimalist and you know they even have, let me read what they have on their site, they say Ello is a simple beautiful ad-free social network created by a small group of artists and designers. Ello doesn't sell ads nor do we sell data about you to third parties. Virtually every other social network is run by advertisers Beyond the scenes, they employ armies of salesmen and data miners to record every move you make. Data is about data about you is then auctioned off to advertisers and data brokers. You, the you are the product that's being bought and sold. They go on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I want to talk to you guys about this. Um, you know, looking, Darlene, looking. At, thanks for pulling that up. When you uh, when you first saw this, Darlene, did you think that okay, I'm ditching Facebook, I'm done with Google Plus, P. Shaw, Twitter, I'm moving to Ella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it just says, uh, welcome to tri to Allo, darling, because I fired uh, Brian Matias a quick message today, and he sent me an invite, so I'm in. I'm in on the inside. Oh, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> so I wanted to, I wanted to kind of take it for a test drive before we talked about it. Yeah. And um, i got to say, I mean, it's, it's definitely clean. Like, all you see sort of in this stream is people posting photos and text. Um, the thing that I found that it was a little bit weird is you have to use markup text. So they've got this section that's actually called WTF. I'm not going to say what it stands for, but people can figure that out on their own um, <laughs> about how to do things. And one of them is how to format text. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so you have to like like put in like bolds and things like that. And if you want a link, you got to put brackets around it and like weird stuff. So it's kind of like you have to code your own format of your post. Yeah, so it's, all, it's still got one foot. It feels like it's got one foot in beta, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And there's some things down. like there's there's no way to search for people, which is you know something that's on the the feature request list and things like that. Um, but you can see I went through um, Brian's friends list and who he was following, and I just found a bunch of other people that he was following and kind of followed the same people and. Mm -hmm. Um, you can just see their photos. There's there's Juan Gonzalez and Thomas Hawks in there. Oh, there's your pal Renee. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean the photos are massive. Like this is on my 27 inch screen and it's full size. Like it's yeah. full screen. Yeah, they don't skimp. They don't no. skimp on. And um, I mean the thing that that Brian talked about is that you can post more than one photo in a post, so it almost becomes like like a little mini blog post kind yeah. of thing. Uh huh. A photo yeah. story. Yeah. yeah, so you can put text, photo, text, photo, text, photo, or however that goes. It's instead of like, you know, when you put stuff on Facebook, you get a blob of text, and then you know your five photos that you can scroll through, but you can't put them in order. So yeah. there's yeah. there's some interesting things about it. I'm kind of gonna reserve judgment until I spend more time on the inside. But um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how I would use it at this point, to be honest, other than just for inspiration and seeing what my friends are up to. Yeah, is this Jeffrey? When you when you look at this, does this does Ello kind of, you know, there there's two schools of thought that I think of. There's probably more than more than two, but two main ones. And there's the okay, this is new. I need to stake my claim on there. I'm gonna get in there and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, doesn't. You know, what what have I lost? It's free anyway. 
Um, and then the other side of it is, you know, you know, I've heard I've I've heard some really prolific social media marketers and and online personalities just talk about you need to get in there and give it a hundred and ten percent to these new networks, and those are the people that build these giant audiences are the ones that embrace the thing, the new thing, and then drive it really hard. What what do you think? Well, I'll say a couple things. First, um, I'll get to your your question in a second, but for me, I, I take a step back because I'm I'm a little bit more on the sort of uh, anti-social network. <laughs> Not that I I love it. Stuff, but <laughs> but uh, I, I was on Facebook years ago for about 30 days and then got got out of that. It just just wasn't for me. Just a little too creepy in, in certain ways. I won't go into. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the one thing, one social uh, network I am a part of and I enjoy a lot is Twitter. And what appeals to me about that, and I'm not trying to make this a Twitter versus Elo, but I'll tell you what I like about Twitter, and then I'll comment about Elo. But um, I like the Twitter is very. It's it's it's. You're forced to use a shorthand because it's 140 characters. Uh, so and it's mostly one way. You can definitely get into a two-way conversation with somebody, but it's mostly just here's my content. You know, take it or or not. Um, but I think that that's sort of. Because I'm not on Instagram either. Because I think Instagram, as a photo, from my point of view as a photographer, and because my photography is very. I don't know, you know, crafted and it's got to be perfect and right. all this kind of stuff in terms of the professional stuff. Uh, I feel funny putting up, like, you know, little snaps of, of things on something like Instagram, which is really a photography-oriented network versus Twitter, which is just like, oh, hey, I'm over here. Let me just show you a picture. Like, yeah. I, I, I feel like there's a different uh, different a, a vibe and expectation from some of these networks. And Twitter works for me because it's like 140 characters. I don't have to craft a post. It's just like here's 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 what I'm gonna I'm not, here's what I'm up to or here's something I'm gonna do or here's something I like, and just bang it out and put it out there and there's not a lot of reverberation it just is out there. Um, so Elo I think is is great in the sense that it's um it's very clean and beautiful to look at. Uh, I like that I like yeah, the no ad thing is great. I'm curious to see how they monetize it. Um, there's some speculation about doing sort of almost like in-app purchases in terms of being able to buy additional features, uh, which I read about, which sounds sounds really interesting. Uh, so, and then to get back to your question, I think, it, yeah, I mean, if you really want to jump into some of these, uh, net, whichever network, and you want to make it really work for you, you do have to put the time in, just just opening an account, because I have a Google Plus account. I don't think I've ever made one post. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, you definitely, if you're, if you're interested in it and you find that any any network or a new network really suits what you, what you have in mind to do, then yeah, if you put the time in and and you really cultivate uh, a lot of uh, you know a, a followers and and a, a group of people that are interested in what you have to say, then it's really going to benefit you because it, it helps everything with your Google ranking and and just getting getting your name out there and and all of that can, uh, certainly can't hurt. But it's like anything else, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. And uh, so I don't I don't put a lot <laughs> into it. Yeah. Even even my own blog, I, I I'm very negligent in getting new posts up there. Post, partly because I feel like they have to be a little bit you know. More crafted than than just oh hey here's here's this thing. Yeah, you so. can't just throw anything up there. But like for both of you guys, I, I'm curious when I when I talk to folks about marketing, one of the first few questions I ask them is okay, you're on social media, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter. Who are you talking to? Like, are you, darling? Why don't you take this first? Are you talking to potential uh, clients? Are you talking to your peers because you want to show how awesome you are as a photographer? Are you if you're a wedding photographer? Are you trying to get brides? Like most people have no idea they're talking right. to any one of 13 people at any given time, right? And I think those are all different. Those are all valid places to to talk to each of those you know groups, right? Yeah. So I think Google Plus is a great place to talk to other photographers because there's there's a big photography community on there. And uh, you just turned blue for Frederick. Oh yeah, no, I see that. <laughs> um, I don't feel well. <laughs> a little blue. Don't don't cry on us. Um, you know, Twitter has never been my thing because I find that I don't get a lot out of it. Um, I will do more stuff on Twitter in terms of local events or if I'm at an event, like if I'm going to a conference or something, I'll use the hashtag to look for, okay, where's everybody hanging out and, you know, what bar are they going to after the event or something right. like that. But I don't use Twitter a lot. So I think each of them has their application and you, you're right. You have to know what you're doing with it, right? Like for me... Um, my current audience is, is photography students, so where they hang out, most of them, is Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I've asked them. You know, I've surveyed my, my readers and I say, well, which social networks do you hang out on? And it's Facebook. So I put more of my marketing efforts in terms of, of courses and things 
onto Facebook and my group and stuff like that. Um, secondary on Google Plus, not so much Twitter. You know, if I get the odd traffic from Twitter, great. But I think that you have to really know what you're going to do, and that's why I said I don't know what I would do with with Ello at this point. Yeah. Right, because it's. Mm -hmm great place to go look at photos but so is Google Plus so I'm, I'm not really sure you know you can get caught up in okay I gotta put stuff on on my blog and Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and now I got Ello and Pinterest and then there's LinkedIn you know like <laughs> somebody like Jeffrey I mean LinkedIn might be more appropriate because you're dealing B2B right like business right. to business mm -hmm. so you really have to pick your platform like you said, based on your on your audience. Yeah. yeah, Jeffrey, what about you? How do how do you approach it? You know, you're you're tweeting, you know, and blogging infrequently, right? But <laughs> yeah, yeah. who who are who well, are you talking to when you do that stuff? Well, I'm glad you brought up LinkedIn too, but also Twitter. Most of my Twitter followers are photographers, okay. um, and a lot of them have been generated through through uh, the kindness of people like you, Frederick, that have me on a show like this. Uh, <laughs> generate some because uh, the first time I did this show, I I, I didn't have a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have any 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 uh, magnificent number of, of uh, followers, but um, but but like enough, you know. So most of them are other photographers, and that's fine because I also have an education component to what I do. Um, I teach workshops, and um, I field tons of questions all the time through email uh, about medium format and about architectural photography and lighting and uh, all those different things. And I enjoy doing that. I like sharing information because I'm a self-taught photographer and, and go to school for it. So I like I like the sharing component. So Twitter for me is okay that it's mostly photographers because that's something that like I'll tweet about you know upcoming workshop or or um, you know put things out there that I think are interesting for an audience like that. And I do have LinkedIn, and I, I have I don't know six or seven hundred um, connections on LinkedIn and so which is great too and the nice thing I mean they used to cross pollinate really well LinkedIn and Twitter yeah uh, it used to be that you would tweet something and it would show up on LinkedIn but they killed that um, I think yeah. it goes the other way but I'll I'll put it I'll deliberately put a post on LinkedIn if it's like a, if I'm sending out an email blast uh, you can send out like the constant contact link to that uh, or if I have um, uh, a blog post uh, that has something to do with more with uh, publication I was in or something or anything that 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 you know obviously clients might be more interested in sure. uh, but I do find that even the stuff that's more nuanced photography you know back end of photography stuff that that uh, sort of in the weeds kind of stuff I think some clients are actually interested in that like I got a great uh, tweet the other day phase one tweeted about me just randomly which is great yeah you know, so I cool. really enjoyed that so uh, yeah I put that up and retweeted that and some of my, my clients responded to that so that the, you know they, they like to see that you're, you're involved in your community and you're involved with the the, the players in, in the field so you're um, active you're actually walking the walk yeah. and talking the talk right 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 exactly so I think it's a little bit of both so if you really break it down Twitter is mostly photographers for me, and LinkedIn is obviously more more client, actual client based, and, and professional connection connections. Well, let, well, Darlene brings up a really good point of this: the mass, and I've been we've, I've been talking about this as well, but the just the growing number of social networks. Lo, you know, is is the latest that we are we're talking about. But from a professional photography standpoint, Jeffrey, when did you take this one first? Mm -hmm. uh, from a professional photographer standpoint, when you look at all the things that you have to do, like Darlene was talking at the top of the show, how she's you know, at a time deficit with all the stuff that she's got to do, how do you fit in these social networks, let alone Elo, a new one you're adding into the mix, but how, how do photographers figure out where to spend their time and what's that magical, you know, formula of social versus actual interacting in the real world quotient? Right. Well, I think in the, in the case of Ello, uh, to me, and I, I looked at it as best I could without without um, getting a key to the door. I did put in an invitation request, but uh, hey, I, <laughs> I didn't like get it. one yet. I like <laughs> <laughs> but um, but from what I can tell, it it does seem to be more a little bit of a photographer to photographer uh, network, and uh, at least if you're, you're a photographer. So I'm not sure. From, uh, well, that's what from Google Plus is too, right? I mean, Google yeah, exactly, Plus, right, right. for so better or for worse, is sort of naturally evolved into a hangout for photographers, right? Yeah. So I think that, uh, which is great, and that's that, that sort of helps that community. It helps people trying to learn, and that that that's terrific. But I think from a commercial perspective, uh, and I, I shouldn't speak because I don't even have one, but I think something like Facebook is, uh, you know, having a Facebook page for your business is probably a better way to go. It just seems like there's a, a bigger audience, or it's a more uh, diverse audience between you, know, you may have other photographers and clients everybody sort of looks to your page and things like that so um, so Ello seem, seems like it could be great for for inspiration and just sharing maybe if you're a professional but you share on Ello maybe you share more, more personal work or other projects that aren't necessarily commercial yeah uh, and again this is all speculation because I'm just learning about this in the last few days yeah so 
But I, I have well, a feeling that that's talking, where Ella's gone. While you're talking, Darlene and I are conspiring to invite you to Ella. Right now. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I just We're in the chat to, window just, inviting you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, I, you know what? I'm going to give this one a try. I'm going I'm to give Ella a try because I, I, I like the idea. I like that there's no ads and stuff. So I'm going to try and jump in. I mean, I'll throw all my other cautions to the wind and just sort of Post some stuff up there and see how it goes. There you go. Hey, you got to give it a shot. <laughs> Darlene, what about you? When you? Darlene, when you look at this stuff, you know, and there's there's this this salad of social networks to choose from or buffet, whatever metaphor you want to use, how do, you, how do you figure out where you're going to spend your time? I mean, it's, you're like the ideal person to ask because you're an active photographer, an educator. You're doing online stuff. you got a husband that you might want to have dinner with every now and then. How do you manage it all? Um, personally, my if I was going to give advice to somebody just you know wanting to build their business, I would say find find the two things that are going to be give you two different things. So one is your your social network to hang out with your peeps, like find where your peeps are. So if that's Google Plus or Facebook group, okay, go there because everybody needs to hang out with people to you know shoot the you know, whatever, you're going to shoot the breeze, right, and mm -hmm. talk about how your day went and you had a lousy shoot or whatever. Um, and then you also need to find out where your clients are. So if it's in the same place, bonus, right, if they're both on Facebook. But but I, I would say that's scary, though. Isn't that scary, though, if your clients mm -hmm. and because I'm not, you know, do clients like Jeffrey's on there? Do clients really want to see pictures of Jeffrey's cat when well, there they're going to be book him for a 50 grand job, you know? <laughs> there has to be a separation though, right? I mean, like, if you're going to be in business on Facebook, you need a page, yeah. right? Like, don't send your clients to your pay your profile. Um, and, it's, and I think it depends. Like, if you're doing weddings, like, it, I'm not doing weddings anymore, but um, like my portrait clients, for example, like I actually get to, to be good friends with a lot of my, my my photography students and my clients, and we will be friends on Facebook, and we'll go for coffee every now and then. So we are like real face-to-face -face friends, and I will let them, you know, friend me as a as a friend versus liking my page. But mm -hmm. people that are following my website and they they send me a friend request, I, I decline it because like I do post personal stuff on there, and they don't really need to see that, and the two should be separate. So yeah. I think that's key. But I also think you should pick one and do it really well. Like, don't go on eight different networks and go, I need to be on all these things and do all this stuff because you're not going to do any of them good. Just pick one and do it do it really well. Yeah. Um, but I was going to mention, there was actually a new one that came across my desk a while ago. One of my writers on um, Digital Photography School mentioned this one. It's called August. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't heard of it. It's August. supposed to be here. I'll um, I'll send you a link and I'll bring it up on the screen. Maybe you can put it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's about either. It's in beta also, but um, let's do a screen share. So this is what it looks like. I have no idea what it's about, but it's supposed to be um, all about artists and things. So stuff like uh, any any kind of art medium. It could be writers, it could be photographers, it could be painters, musicians, and it's just content from creative individuals, supposedly. Okay. Um, where where it goes and what it's all about, I don't know, but there you go, there's another one. Yeah, see, and there you go. See, that, that brings up another question. I mean, you know, we could talk about this stuff, this whole show almost, but the, the idea of this new stuff keeps coming up, but if none of your friends, like you said, Darlene, if none of your friends are there, What's the point, right? Is it are you going there to make new friends, or do you have to wait until people get the hint that hey, all the cool kids are across the street now, come over here and hang out and use these features? Uh, how do, how does that piece work? What do you think? Well, I mean, I, I was kind of fairly early on Google Plus as well, not quite as early as as Trey. I mean, Trey Reckliff has like a, you know a billion followers because he was early on, and yeah. so does Thomas Hawk. Um, but I was in the first year, and I never really did anything with it until a while. In and um, then I started getting involved, and um, I went to the Google Plus conference that they had a couple years ago, yeah, and met lots there. of people. And um, oh, that's too bad we didn't meet. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. so I mean, I started using it more. Like Jeffrey said, you know, if you don't use it, you're not gonna what you put in, what you get, what a, what you get put in, you get out, right? Yeah. So I put more time and effort in, and I joined some groups, and we had hangouts, and I grew, you know, some following there. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to jump into the next few things because, honestly, I don't think either of my audience or my friends are at these places, right? Mm -hmm. And so far, what I've seen on Allo, it's the same people that I know on Google+. Plus. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the same people are going to post to a photography-related social network. You're probably going to see on both, both platforms, right? Exactly. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing, you know, commitment and, you know, not losing all the work that you put in. Because I, I look at, you know, I read the news and we, we hear these reports about Google Plus and, you know, is Google losing their enthusiasm for Google Plus after Vic left or are they doubling down on it? Are they just being smart and integrating it more into the network? What's going on over there? Clearly something's happening. But I get nervous when these new networks come out. I'm like, okay, now, you know, I'm going to put all this effort into this thing now. And, you know, in some conference room in Silicon Valley or wherever somewhere, some MBA is going to make a decision that erases all my work. <laughs> you know? right. So I worry about that stuff. It's a legitimate concern because, Darlene, like you said, time is money, right? So mm -hmm. you invest yourself in these networks, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, etc., and then things shift underneath you. Well, you know, I'll tell you, you actually, I, I, this might be a good point to end it on because um, I actually don't put my eggs in any of those baskets. Like, I don't put all my eggs in those baskets. I put mm -hmm. my eggs into my website, right? So mm -hmm. I all of my social media network stuff is to drive traffic to back to my website. Yes, and then when they you. get there, all of my traffic and all of my efforts there are to get them to sign up to the email list. So mm -hmm. your email list is your gold, and everything else is just to get them to the pot of gold. Yeah, mm -hmm. every I call it I call it uh, uh, digital sharecropping. When you build your network on one of these, so, you know, the large social networks, you're essentially renting room from someone. You know, yeah. and when they decide that, you know what, I'm painting your place pink because I feel like it, or you know what, I don't like your barbecue grill on the deck, so you can move it. You know, you are at their beck and call based on what they want. When you Darlene, like you were saying, when you cultivate your own land that you own on your blog, everything stays there. Plus, with the email list piece of it, you own the relationship with your customer, friend, whoever, and you. if that network shuts down that drove that person over to you, you don't care because you have the one-to-one -one relationship to communicate with them whenever something significant happens. Right? Yeah, and it's not like Facebook where if I send an email out to my list and you know we're talking and they've double opted in and all that legal stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're going to see it. They are going to get it in their inbox, whereas if they're a Facebook fan, 10% of them will see it. Right. Or you could pay. You could pay yeah. and more will yeah. see it. Exactly. Yeah, that's a whole other question. All right, well, cool. Well, people that are listening to this, regardless of, of how you feel about social media, social networking, anti-social networking, whatever, <laughs> head over to LO and check them out. E-L-L-O, you should be able to find them. Uh, check them out. If you don't have an invite, you know, find someone who does and get invited. I think they give they only give you like five invites or something to give out, right, darling? Something like that. Yeah, I think it's a finite number. So ten. Ten. Okay. Cool. Well, I won't waste it. I'll I'll try and be active on there. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. She she gave you a great gift. That's true. All right, guys. Uh, before we continue the show, I want to thank our next episode or next sponsor for this episode of this week in photo, and that's our friends over at FreshBooks.com. All right, this next story is about GoPro. Uh, so quickly, let me just set this up. So GoPro, the, the folks that make the action cameras and accessories, announced recently announced three new cameras to their lineup. They announced a GoPro Hero 4 Black, which features 4K video at 30 frames a second, uh, 2.7K at 50 frames a second, 1080 at slow, 1080 slow motion at 120 frames per second, and you can pull 8.3 megapixel stills from your 4K footage, like on some other cameras that we've been talking about. And you can shoot, so basically, um, from that footage, you can get kind of magazine quality photos or from these little cameras for the first time, and they go on sale this month, which is October, for 500 bucks, plus... They released a GoPro Hero 4 Silver, which gives you a touchscreen and some other things and Wi-Fi, um, and that's 400 bucks. And then they've got the GoPro Hero, um, and that's that 1081 at 30 frames a second, 720 at 60 frames a second. Um, you can still do stills out of this thing, but they're at 5 megapixels. This is kind of your your workhorse of the GoPro Hero lineup, and that one's only 130 bucks. So I know you guys have heard of GoPro. Jeffrey, we're going to start with you first because you <laughs> sure. shoot with the antithesis of GoPro cameras. Right. <laughs> exactly. you, you could probably, it takes like, what, nine GoPro cameras <laughs> to make up one shot that you do? So do you, I mean, looking at these, do you use these kind of cameras in general, these action cameras for any behind-the-scenes stuff or training or anything? Uh, I don't yet, but I, re I really uh, pay a lot of attention to, to that market, and uh, I, w I put a link in the show notes um, 
to a 60 minute story about the guy who started GoPro, this guy named uh, Nick Woodman. Yeah. And it's, it's just a really cool story to see how he had the, he had a, literally a film camera strapped to his wrist back in 2002 and that's how <laughs> he started the company. Yeah. So I, I, first of all, I just love tech, uh, you know, you know, these success stories, like it's like an Elon Musk and Tesla and SpaceX and GoPro. Yeah. They all seem like kind of the same sort of thing. So, um, I don't personally use them. I know people who do, and I know, um, I just sort of keep an eye on, on that that whole space yeah. of, of of that kind of product because the one thing I have been looking at for them uh, in general are these multi rotor drones, um, which you know we could do a whole three episodes on those things. Oh yeah, uh, but uh, so it just um, it doesn't seem like the still capability, the still photo capability of the new cameras has improved by because I think they're still twelve megapixel stills, yeah. which I believe was what they were before. So, but from a video pr uh, perspective, it seems great uh, to be able to to shoot 4K from you know from a uh, whatever they are six or eight hundred dollar multi rotor would be amazing. Right. right. And um and when you watch the uh, the little video that was I think it was on Petapixel was that the the link that you sent us? Yep. The uh, uh, I was amazed at how how well stabilized those videos. Is that all done in post, or yeah. is that uh, actually done some other way? I don't know. Um, I know like, I don't know. I didn't see. Yeah. I didn't see an image stabilization in any of the specs there. But you know, who knows? We have to. I don't have my hands on one to make that call yet. Yeah, because I mean, some of it was like so still. It just looked mm -hmm. perfect. You know, just those those nice shots. So uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of still photography, because one thing at least in the I don't want to switch this over to the multi rotor drone thing. But the one thing that's been sort of keeping me from getting one, aside from all the legal stuff, is being able to fly a decent camera compared to the other camera I shoot with. I'm not going to put a phase one rig on one, although I saw someone who did. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> that's but, uh, that's bold. <laughs> yeah, definitely bold. But the simplicity of the GoPro—I mean, they, they've taken uh, technology, or they've taken the capability and put it in everybody's hands that used to take, you know, a full production crew to be able to do any of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, especially the slow motion capability and uh, the underwater. I mean, that's amazing that you can just, you know, out of the box, you can just throw this thing underwater and you barely have to touch it. You just turn it on it's and, and it works. So I think that it, it's amazing and I, 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 I sort of look for reasons to have one. <laughs> uh, and I think that I've been thinking of doing some some sort of behind the scenes videos and that would certainly be one of the products I would definitely get yeah. uh, to do some of that kind of stuff. Because even, even with a 5D, which I have, Seems like a little more fussy than I might want to do. I think I think the GoPro is, is nice because it's just it's quick and, and it's almost like the Twitter in my mind. It's like you're, the expectations are lower. You know, it's like I'm just shooting with a GoPro, so don't expect too much. But but now, yeah, I mean, you can get great results from them. That's what I was gonna so, say. Hey, yeah, I mean that yeah. they flip that on its head because yeah, it's a uh, it's almost push button simplicity. You know, you mm -hmm. press it and go, and you don't get point and shoot type footage. You get that cinematic kind of crazy looking where this yeah. come from type footage. Right. Yeah. I mean I wonder what they're going to do next. I don't know if they're going to you know it would seem like a step in the wrong direction because they're so simple if they were to come out with you know interchangeable lenses or or at least different mop body bodies with different focal length lenses mm -hmm. even though they might be a fixed lens maybe they have a slightly longer lens or some way to just flip the lens over and all of a sudden it's a telephoto or something. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what they do next, but this is a huge step forward, and I think the guy has the limit for them, man. They could come yeah. out with whatever they want, and people will buy it at this point. So yeah, the guy's Darlene, already a billionaire. So, <laughs> Darlene, you, you, I mean, have you used these these cameras? Do they fit into your workflow at any point? No, I, I haven't yet. But honestly, when you sent me that that link, and I had a look at it, and I went 130 bucks. Okay, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's kind of like they said, it it removes the barriers. To why would you not try it for 130 bucks? You know, right. and if you if you like it, you can you can move up a model kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I actually might see if I can grab one of those before we go on our trip because we we want to do some video and stuff on our trip, and you know we do some stuff where we're in a boat or we're on the beach. So having the water yeah, you gotta have one. nice and um, yeah, you know, I mean last time last time it would have been great because we uh, we slid down we slid down a volcano last time on a board, which is kind of crazy. Um, but having like that on my head, sliding down the volcano, that would have been that would have been pretty sweet. Yeah, or zip lining or whatever. I mean, that's yeah. they're, they're designed yeah. for that. That's, that's yeah, exactly. Crazy. So I mean, like when we go on our our tours and workshops and things, we also want to do interviews with people and just like shoot some of the activities that we're doing. You know, like we're doing stuff at the schools with the kids and things. And um, you know, I think they would have a lot of fun with it too. Like just playing games with them. And um, I mean, they're super wide lenses, right? So. Mm -hmm get some crazy wide angle action of, of playing soccer or whatever, right? Right, right. right. Strap it on the ball and away you go. 
I just wonder where this stuff is going. These are these are. I mean, it's a new category that we didn't even have several years ago, right? And and all these different uses, like Jeffrey, you you brought up the whole idea of these these multi rotor drones and using them on there, and you know all the the uh, the the shots that you can get now with that kind of configuration that you couldn't get five years or so ago. Now we, you know, we're pushing all this stuff forward. It looks like to me like. Sorry, Jeffrey. It looks like things are getting smaller <laughs> in terms right. of the gear that we're carrying around. You know, iPhone Plus notwithstanding, but we're, right. you know, our gear is getting smaller and smaller, yet more and more capable at the same time. Darling, mm. what what do you think of that? I mean, how has your camera bag changed over, say, the past twenty four months? Well, it, it, it well, I upgraded to the five D Mark III a couple whenever it came out, but uh, yeah. currently my my eyes are set on the uh, the Fuji XT one. You know, mm -hmm. if, um, mm -hmm. if I can swing picking one up before I go in the next few weeks, um, I'll probably be taking that in my bag and leaving my Canon at home. Wow. And, yeah, and, and and we're going for two and a half months. Like we're doing the tour, and then we're staying there. So we're spending a good chunk of time down there. And and to yeah, leave my Canon behind would be a big step. You know, like mm -hmm. I came from the world. I mean, Jeffrey's using big cameras and big files, and I came from that world too, where I did commercial stuff with a four by five, and I shot you know transparency film, and then I used a Hasselblad, and then I used a thirty five mil film camera, and then I used digital. So I'm like. It is. I'm going smaller, right? Like I'm not going the other way, and um, I still have my Hasselblad in the closet. And people have said, "Oh, I'll just get a digital back." It's like, okay, well, I could spend ten thousand dollars and do that, but it doesn't fit into my shooting style anymore, you know. And am I going to haul that on on trips and things? It's not for me. Me, it's not feasible. It's not functional, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that it does when you're traveling, you know, like the smaller cameras, you're you're less of a target. Because right? yes. people don't see that as you know, you pull out the the seventy to two hundred two eight, and the you know the full frame camera, and these these the thieves are are savvy as to which are the expensive cameras, mm -hmm. and uh, I know people that put black tape over their model of their camera so they don't know what what they're carrying, yeah. but you become a big target when you bring that out, right? And so you're always conscious of your gear, and I think when you go smaller, there's less of that. And there's less intimidation factor for the people you're photographing. You know, like you stick a big lens in somebody's face, they're they're automatically going to assume you're a pro, whether you are or not, mm -hmm. and they're going to assume that you're going to try and sell it, whether you are or not, and they may want you to pay, or they may not sign a model release, or whoever that goes. But if you come up with your GoPro or your, you know, your Lumix or your Fuji or your whatever, they'll be like, oh yeah, take my photo, put me on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, right? you're just a tourist. You're not important. Yeah, right. Yeah. Darling, you should you should grab one of those while you're ordering Fuji stuff. You should order one of those Fuji Instax instant cameras as well. You know the ones that pop out the little Polaroid type photo out of the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. Get, I'm I'm having. I have. I, this was my pick of the week. I think it was last week. But the little Instax smartphone printer is the SP1 or SP2 or something. But it's a little tiny printer that you connect with an app to your smartphone, Android, wow. iOS, and you print. And out comes a print out of it. Awesome. Okay. I love it. I've been, well, I've been giving people prints enough. almost every day since I got that thing. I'm just like <laughs> taking cool. pictures and printing them. <laughs> well, that would be really cool. Um, is that the one that's, what's episode, 338? 388? Yeah, yeah, right before this one. Yep. Okay, I'm going to check it out right now. Yeah, definitely go check that out. I love it. It's, uh, it's a cool little, cool little gizmo. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. So, uh, so I take it, Jeffrey. So, Darlene's gonna yep. get one. You're not gonna get one, right? No, I'm, I, I might get one just to just to play around. There's there's yeah. some other, you know, other ideas I think that w would certainly be fun to use it for. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely have my eye on that. And wonder, uh, let me grab this thing. I won I wonder how Sony's doing because Sony is competing with GoPro with this guy. I'm holding up the mm -hmm. the Sony Action Cam here. I don't know if you can see it with this bright light I have. But it's a Sony action cam, and it's a little tiny camera that's weatherproof, all that stuff. It's designed to go head-to-head -head with in that category with the likes of GoPro. And the one thing that they had to st stand on, at least with this model, or one of the things, was the fact that it had in-camera image stabilization. Mm -hmm. And based on what you were saying, Jeffrey, I wonder if GoPro kind of up the ante there and took that advantage mm -hmm. away. And put that in, so we'll have to. Yeah, I don't know if they put it in or if it's. Yeah, I don't know a ton about video, but it, some of it's super stable. So it looks like something was done in post, or or it's actually part of the uh, part of the hardware. Yeah, or maybe yeah, maybe it was the GoPro software or something. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, before we jump into the listener Q and A, I want to thank 
the next sponsor for this episode of TWIP, and that's our friends at Linda. All right, Darlene, I know you have some uh, some comments on this question. Let me read it first for the listeners. Uh, this one is from Joe Burns. He says, uh, the question reads, Listener Joe Bur Burns agreed to photograph a birthday party for a client friend whom they had shot for in the past. The client kept coming up with excuses not to pay the deposit, so Joe agreed to take the full payment on the day rather than taking a deposit because the client is also a friend. The client now wants to cancel and have another friend shoot the event instead. Meanwhile, Joe had turned down multiple photo shoots for that day because he'd committed to photograph her party. Now Joe is wondering if they should still show up to the event. What do you guys think? Darlene, what, where, where did he go wrong? Well, there's th I would say there's three elements here. Number one, I, I generally don't do work for friends, and if I do, it, it, they're, they're treated just like any other regular client. Yeah. Whether, whether I give them a, a deal or a discount or not, um, it's exactly the same as any other client. So yeah. they pay the deposit, they sign a contract ahead of time, all of that stuff. If it's not done, I'm not showing up, and it's really clear to them that I'm not showing up until I have the deposit. Um, I mean, and the other thing, too, the, the second part is you want to be careful of that word deposit because there's a lot of legal stuff around when you make a deposit. Legally, the word deposit is... Um, you're paying for a product that you have not received yet, mm -hmm. and if, if you do not get that product, like a physical thing, you get your deposit back. But what he's wanting them to pay is a retainer instead. So a retainer is completely different in the eyes of the law because a retainer means that you're paying to reserve that time uh, of the services of the photographer, right? So if for some reason you cancel, like in, in when I used to do weddings, um, that was a big thing in my contract. There was always a retainer, not a deposit, no. and um, no exceptions. I mean, you kind of have to play the bad guy in, in, in some respects, but if you don't, be the professional all the way through and treat everybody the same, this is what happens, you know, and you have to say, look, this is my business, um, I'm going to do you a favor and I might give you a deal or a break on the price, but I still need the deposit because I need a guarantee that I'm, I'm doing this job for you, otherwise I'm going to go take these other jobs. And people have to understand that and if, if the friend says, oh, well, you know, you're being a jerk about it, then maybe they weren't such good friends in the in the first place. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be showing up to that to that job at all. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Or to add on to that, maybe if you are not the person that can be that strong and stand up and say, you know, no, give me this, then defer it and do the whole car salesman thing where, you know what? My wife, my husband <laughs> handles all the finances. Let me see if I can run this by her. I think I might be able to get you a discount, but she's really a stickler on this stuff, you know. And do the you know? Let me go talk to my manager in the back room. So right, yeah. right, right. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, what do you think? What, what, where did Joe go wrong here? Well, I think I think what Darnley says is true too, because the first thing that caught my eye was that sort of client and friend situation, which yeah. um, I wrote in my own little notes is uh, it's someone's always going to get screwed there, <laughs> and it's usually you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the, but the the big the factor that I think uh, was missing from the equation in the question was how much time was there between when he was when he when the client said that they wanted to cancel and when the event was meant to be, mm -hmm. because like in my business um, and. Let's just talk first about the two different, like my business model. I shoot for architects and designers and and some commercial people. We have a, I wouldn't say a more flex, well, a more flexible schedule in the sense that yeah, we get each other on the phone. We'll say well, we want to schedule a shoot. We want to work with you. When can you do it? It's like well, I can't do it that week. Can you do it the other week? And we usually are able to to find a time that we can do it. In the event business, wedding and event uh, business, it's much different because there's a, a specific date. And if you're not available on that date, then you're going to lose the job. It's not like you're going to get the next one because most most people get married once or, you know, they only have their 50th birthday once or whatever the event may be. Yeah. So I think in that business, you have to be much more of a stickler about the retainer. And Darlene put a great definition on that. Um, so I think that that's, uh, that's really crucial. So, But uh, I don't know. In like, my business, we, I say in my contract, um, I need at least 48 hours uh, cancellation if the job's actually going to be canceled. Mm -hmm. um, and then the set sort of gives you those two days, whatever. It's not really enough time to necessarily reschedule something. Right. But it's um, a lot of times uh, I've had very few jobs actually get absolutely canceled. We get postponements all the time. And some of those are weather, some of those are the building's not ready or, or some other factor. So I'm pretty flexible with that kind of stuff. 
But so I would like to know from from Joe uh, what the time frame was because if it's if uh, he was told if he was given a month's notice, seems like he might be able to find something else uh, for that uh, for that time period. If he was given a couple days notice, yeah. then it's then it's definitely a thing. But I think either way, he's, he really has to have a very a, a polite but direct conversation with the with the uh, with the person. In this case, they have to be more on the client side than the friend side and say, uh, "Just want you to understand that I I, I turned down some other work to, to hold this time for you." And because we're friends, I didn't push the detail of that I need the the, the retainer in order to hold the time. Yeah. So that you really left me uh, out in the wind here, and I don't have this work to do. And if you want to work with the other photographer because you prefer their work, that's fine. But you still need to pay me. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the, the client would end up paying twice. Yeah. So this this whole thing, this whole conversation, you know, we're we're in October now, 2014. We're heading into the holiday season again, and most people, I would argue, listening to the show and people that have been on the show are in the spot of being, quote, the photographer at family events and stuff. So there's like an unwritten, unspoken expectation that you may take a photo or two and post them online for everybody to see. You know, Darlene, mm -hmm. does, does this or <laughs> has this happened to you in the past where, you know, hey, Darlene, you're a photographer. Where's that fancy camera of yours? Take some pictures of little Bob. You know what? They don't because I don't bring – I'm really bad at it, actually. I don't <laughs> He's like, I leave my superpowers at home. True. Well, and again, I'm going back to, you know, if I had like a little camera that was, was easier to bring instead of my whole rig, <coughs> excuse me, I would bring it. And I end up going to family functions and my sister will hand me her camera to take some shots while, you know, they're doing the kids' birthday party. Yeah. Special things like, you know, like a major, you know, 65th, my mom's birthday or whatever, or a big anniversary, I will bring, right, if it's a big party. My grandmother turned 90. Of course, I'm going to take photos of that, right? Mm -hmm. But um, generally, like Thanksgiving yesterday, uh, I went to eat turkey. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't want to go process raw files after I get home, right? Because yeah. Yeah. to me, it's like it's work then, you know? But I was going to say, in terms of this situation with, with Joe, um, I mean, it's kind of, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? And you can't, you, you almost can't enforce it now because it's after the fact. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to just go, okay, let's chalk it up to a learning experience. What did I learn from this? I'm not going to do this ever again. And, you know, he gets to decide if he wants to still be friends with that person or not. But I think you have to take, you know, sort of your own accountability in the situation as to, what did you allow to transpire to get to this place, right, by not signing mm -hmm. the contract? And what I would say to to friends that, that are going to book me and I want to sign a contract with them, a contract is designed to protect both parties, right? You know, people think in terms of, oh, the photographer is making me sign a contract. They're, you know, like you said, snake oil salesman or mm -hmm. car salesman or whatever. But a contract protects both parties. So a contract outlines for the client the amount that you're paying and it's locked in stone, so that's not going to change later, right? That's in writing that you're going to show up at X time and stay X number of hours. So the details of the contract are in there and what, what you are going to provide. So it protects them in terms of, okay, I'm paying you this money to come, but I know what I'm going to get back. And yep. so when you, when you say it to them in that way, they're like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So let's just outline it so that there's no misunderstandings later. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. the The phrase I like to use a lot is "good fences make good neighbors," right? So <laughs> you <laughs> want to know where that property line That's is? A good one, right? It's it's That's the truth, good. you know. When, with it's when you have that ambiguity is when you get problems of, hey, your dog's on my lawn. No, that's my lawn. You know, you right. want, you well, want curtains make good neighbors too. Curtains, yes. <laughs> Sometimes, unless Jeffrey's around with his multi rotor quadcopter. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's a whole other podcast. Then we're right, definitely right. closing the curtains. Yes, yes. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, so this is that's a that's a good question. I like the tip of uh, just plain verbiage, Darlene, of don't say deposit, say retainer. You know, mm -hmm. and that that little nuance can make you listeners. That little nuance can make you thousands of dollars <laughs> right there. Stream right. of Darlene. Darlene, well, one other. Go ahead, go ahead, Jeffrey. Just one other point about the retainer, at least from my understanding, is that it's better also because, uh, and I think mostly Darlene's point, but just a different way of thinking about it, is like for me, if I had a retainer from a client and then they canceled the job, um, you know, think of it the other way, they, they're they not going to get the money back, like Darlene was saying. So you, you, you're guaranteed at least that much money from, from it. And, um, and that's just Whereas a, a deposit a, inherently sounds like it's refundable. You yeah, put a deposit exactly. on an apartment, so, you don't get the apartment, you get your money back. Yeah, you put a retainer with your lawyer, 
you're probably mm-hmm. not going to get that money back after. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's gone, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it depends on, you know, if Joe is an event photographer and he's turning away events on a weekend, right, it could be that he's turned away a wedding, perhaps, right, and, and yeah. to go to this, this birthday party or whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he needs to, to maybe be clear and the time period of cancellation. Like when I did weddings, um, if they canceled more than six months in advance, the, I mean, they don't get the retainer back regardless. Um, in, in one extenuating circumstance did I give somebody uh, a credit, and this was one where I felt so sorry for the bride because literally the groom took off with another woman that he got <laughs> pregnant and married her instead. So we felt so sorry for for this girl's family, and her family had paid the deposit and everything. So we did family portraits for them, and um, you know they ended up being really pleased with them. But like usually, your retainer is I'm keeping that, and sometimes it, you know if they're they're hard up for cash or it's like I said extenuating circumstances, I, I'm not going to be the bad guy. If I can rebook it, I will give you your your money back. But yeah. if I can't, I, I still got to make a living. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like yeah, the there's no room for being the. I mean, it, it, it's harsh to say you can't be the nice guy because you can be the nice guy, but it's got to be, you know, in 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 a corral of business, right? right. We're talking business. This is you yeah. know these are these are numbers that are associated with this. This is not emotional. Here's here are the numbers. If you don't do this by this date, then this money's forfeit, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, now we understand each other. Let's talk about these awesome pictures we're going to make for you. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah well, so. It's funny because they also think that because you're in business for yourself mm-hmm. that you're negotiable. Anything's negotiable, right? They wouldn't walk into uh, the department store or the, any store at the mall, even if your friend worked there, and say, hey, give me a deal. Because right. they know that that's not the way it works, right? In some countries it does, but yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. Like Nicaragua, right? You could negotiate. Uh, yeah, you can get some pretty good bargains. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah but yeah, not not on services with high level photographers for sure. No. All right, guys, let's uh, let's move on from this and um, let's jump into our picks of the week segment. So this is the segment where you guys can pick anything to recommend to the TWIP audience as long as it relates to photography somehow. Jeffrey, I have a feeling, mm-hmm. you know, actually I have a feeling that both of you guys are going to have expensive picks. I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for me, that and I don't even have it yet because it's like just come out and just being sort of approved, is the new version of uh, Phase 1's Capture One Pro 8. Uh, which is the raw conversion software that I use. Currently, I'm using Zoom. Uh I've used it for a long, long time because I've been with a Phase One back for since 2005, I think. So, uh, it's software. I think I've recommended it um, also in the past, but it's um, they've added some new features. Uh, there's uh, what do they call them? A clone and heal layer. Uh, what do they call them? Yeah, clone, clone and, and heal repair layers, which is a uh, just another way of, of adding some some adjustments on top of the raw file. Cool. Uh, so versus being able to output the file to Photoshop and doing those adjustments, you're actually doing it before the data is turned into pixels. Oh, so uh, yeah, so and they've had these other uh, sort of um, uh, adjustments that you could make, but they've added a few more. So you could do um, localized color adjustments with a brush or a gradient uh, mask on them, and uh, they have some really strong tools in there. And I I, I definitely use it because I, I need to use it, but it also works great with. Uh, with almost any camera form. I don't know if there's any cameras that it doesn't support. So for me, it's great because it's one workflow. Whether I shoot with the Phase 1 back, the Leica camera, or the Canon, uh, it, it's all one workflow. And what, so, what are the, I'm looking at the page now. I can't find the price mm-hmm. on there. What is, is, it, is it free if you own the camera, or what? Uh, there's different things. The, the link I put in there was actually um, to... I, I put it in because there's a little more information on that page just about blogs and tutorials and things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the price, uh, price step, it's some, probably somewhere around $300 for the full version of it. But if you own a digital back, uh, it's free just to process the files from the di- digital back. Uh, so upgrading to that is, is free. But if you want to process anything else, then you need to buy the full license. But they're also uh, adopting, uh, as an option, a subscription model. I don't uh, have all the details in front of me, but there's also that if if you think that model fits your your business I plan. I wonder better. wonder where they got that <laughs> idea. From. Right, 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 right. But they're not stuffing it down your throat. They're not saying, oh, guess what? You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yet. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yet. Yeah. 
So we'll see where they, I think they're just testing the waters with that. Um, and one of the just sort of fun pick I, I put in there, um, <laughs> uh, it's always fun to see what Leica comes up with, right? And Photokina just passed a month or so ago. So they decided, well, hey, we have these great analog film cameras, and they just released a new one of those, which is kind of fun. And they're like, we kind of like the way that looks. How about if we make a digital camera without an LCD on the back? <laughs> so they, they have a digital camera which just has the only controls that you ever had as a photographer of shutter speed, aperture, um, your ISO, and I guess you know, your lens choice. Uh, so all it has on the back is an ISO dial. Um, and it's a completely different, updated, kind of crazy industrial design. Yeah, um, I'm not beautiful. sure if it's also a Walter De Silva, uh, who was the industrial designer with Audi and things like that. It might be another one of his designs. So what's but, that? What, uh, what's the price tag on that? Who yeah. knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I don't see it. Isn't that the one where if you have to ask, you can't afford it? Uh -huh. It's definitely in that category. I know they they released the, the they had so many different things that came out of Photokina, but they released one limited edition kit that was a digital camera, you know, the M digital camera and an M analog camera and a couple of lenses that was like 50,000 bucks yeah. um, as yeah. a kit, you know. So, I mean, this is a limited edition. It's, I'm sure it's a, uh, who knows, I'm not even going to guess, but it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Darlene says, if you have to ask, you can afford it. It reminds me of yeah. uh, yesterday, actually, we went to Marin, just poking around in the Marin Mall or whatever, their little outdoor mall out there, and it turns out they have a Tesla dealership in there. So I oh, went, in, yeah, those are great. went into the Tesla dealership and made the mistake of asking how much they cost, you know, which instantly disqualified me as a customer. <laughs> 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 They're like, oh, okay, it's one of these. Yeah, what do you want, a brochure, kid? Get out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, but that camera is beautiful, though. I would, I mean, I don't know how I'd feel about going out without a targeting computer, but, you know, kind of, uh -huh. you know, shooting blind, especially if it's something that you really want to, you want to capture, that's, that's a little scary, but mm -hmm. old school. It's old school. Yeah, it definitely is. All right, well, cool, Jeffrey. Thank you for both of those. Sure. All right, Darlene, and what, what is your pick of the week? Well, what makes you think I have expensive taste, Frederick? I don't know. Something tells me. Something it's tells not. Me. It's not. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screen share it. Hang on. So my pick this week is, I don't even know where I found this. Uh, somebody tweeted it or something, but it's it's Portine gear. It's pick design your own bag, okay? Ooh. So it's camera bags, and they have this little bag builder here, so you pick your, your size of your bag, so there's the unisex bag, the large, the medium, the compact, or I think they have some mirrorless now, I think the compact is designed for mirrorless, so uh, let's say we want a medium bag, and you go in here, and then you get to pick your colors, and check this out, right, so it puts it into oh, cool. the bag, yeah. and then you can pick your mi middle color, Right, so you can go like crazy stuff. You can have an elephant on your bag like that. <laughs> That's <Right>? nice. <laughs> I like it. Look at that. So yeah, can I, you upload I your own designs. Um, I don't know. So that you can pick the 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 waxing. I don't even know what that is. The interior color, the strap color, the accent fabric, and the the leather. And then they have an Etsy store <laughs> where they've got some that are sort of pre-designed, so you can you can have a look and see what they've got like in stock, and then just order one, right? So that's where I found the elephant, and then I was like, oh, I gotta go find the elephant. But I just thought these were like the coolest thing ever. It's like, I gotta get one of these. I, I'm looking for price. Where, what's the price point? Okay, so this medium one right here is 183 Canadian. Okay. So, I mean, that's like like 175 bucks, 170 bucks US. Does it change with the materials that you picked? I don't like... think so, no. Because I, I played with a few of them, because they're all leather plus a fabric. Okay. Um, it changes with the size of the bag. Like if I go to the large one, it was a little bit more. Um, and then there was a convertible one that kind of looks more like a purse, but you know you guys wouldn't want that one. So large one, you can make it sort of more masculine. So 218 Canadian, it gives me Canadian dollars because it knows where I live. Yep. Um, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That seems, I mean, that, that seems really cool. My own bag. But I'm not going to do it till I decide if I'm getting the Fuji, and then if I get the Fuji, I'm going to get a spanky new bag to put it all in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm, like, looking at those. I've got a bag right now. Not a bag, but a closet full of bags, literally. The bottom of one <laughs> of my closets. That, that, yes. I have nothing like, but camera <laughs> bags, and there, I still don't have the right camera bag. <laughs> well, there's, never, there's not one solution, that's all. There isn't. 
Yeah, I mean, you got to have like six bags, right? You got like your travel bag, yes. but then you got your travel bag with a laptop and without a laptop. And just an you iPad got, and yeah, a small you iPad. got your, your piggy <laughs> bag where you might want to just put a couple lenses in and not necessarily need room for extra bodies and flash and all this other stuff. Right. Then you got your, okay, I'm going to a, a job bag, which is like everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah. yeah. You know, the roller bag or a big low pro or whatever. Yeah, so you need, you need bags. But these are. I mean, these are kind of in comparison to those, um, the ones that look like purses for the ladies. I forget who makes them. Yeah, there's a couple of different manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I never got one of those, but those are kind of cool too. But I thought these are neat, and there's even some. There's a unisex one that, you know, is for, for the guys too. So it doesn't look like a purse. You can make it look like a guy's, you know, messenger bag. and. Man, See, the, the, I think the coolest camera bag that I've seen so far... Um, was in New Zealand, and Trey Radcliffe had it. And I don't know what it was made of. You know Trey, right? He's always, yeah. you know, he's got that Burning Man gene or something in him. So, it was, you know, it's all this rustic cool stuff. And I think the bag was, like, made out of a cow's stomach or something. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> but it was cool looking, you know. So but you, you could make haggis know. or a camera bag out of, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You would never know that it was uh, that it was a camera bag, you know, or that there was expensive camera gear inside of it, you know. And that's, that's kind of the idea with, you know, these purse things. But, I mean, your purse, if you're worried about pickpockets, they're still going to steal your purse, right? So. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Crazy you know, time! You actually, you actually want one that's like the rattiest looking, dirty, stinky bag you can imagine, and then nobody's gonna steal it. There you go. Right. I'm telling you, just go buy something from the secondhand store, drag it through the mud yeah, a couple of times, yeah. you know, and then have at it. Go be the nonconformist when it comes to camera bags. Just get <laughs> don't get something that looks cool, you know. I don't know. I think I think it's a it's a photographer's disease, though. I mean, we. Uh, you know, I, I know how women feel about their, their Michael Kors purses because camera bags are, like, I see different camera bags. Like, okay, I got to have that one. I don't care. You know, and you got to have it, and then you get it, and you're like, eh, it was okay. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys, we are at the end of another episode of This Week in Photo. Oh, you know what? I, f I forgot to do my pick of the week. So my pick of the yeah. week, Darlene, is your tutorial. My oh. pick of the week is your it's tutorial. Not, it's, not, it's not even on sale yet, Frederick. You I know, I, but I know it's going to be awesome. I'm just saying, <laughs> and I've seen the trailer, so I'm making it my pick of the week. So. <laughs> okay. When does that when does that thing go live? When's uh when is well, it? Well, tech. Yeah, we can't talk about the thing we can't talk about. Oh yes, yes. Um, but but you can it, talk about it because it'll, by the time it'll they go hear live booth, on my site after our, we're finished Nicaragua tour. Okay. So, like November, because we need to make sure that we're in a place where we can actually answer support emails if something goes wrong and people aren't getting it. So we don't want to we don't want to launch it while we're in the middle of the boonies somewhere. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. So yeah, I think that's a that's a good pick. So and you guys are doing oh you know it's always good to see quality education stuff out there in the industry for photographers that it doesn't necessarily come from the usual you know people sitting at the top of the Illuminati pyramid. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, the thing that, like, Bruce and I teach classes, and, and Jeffrey teaches as well, where we actually physically are in a classroom with real people face-to-face, -face, yeah. right? And so we we teach this same material there, and we know what questions they have, and we know what things they struggle with, and we've built all that in there, you know? We've tried to cover as much of that as possible. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Well, cool. Well, congratulations on that. Thanks. All right, uh, Jeffrey, where would you like the TWIP audience to go to uh, keep up with you or link to you, etc.? Well, since I am so limited on social media... I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just my website, jeffreytotara.com, and also you can find me on Twitter at, at jeffreytotara. Easy, perfect, and yep. we'll link to those in the, the show notes for this episode. True. Miss Hildebrandt, what about you? Where can people go to connect with you online? Well, they can find me on Facebook, and they can find me on Google Plus and Twitter. I'm DP Mentor on Twitter, but ideally, come to my website, which is digitalphotomentor.com. What about Ello? You're on Ello too, right? Yeah. Well, I have like one post. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yes, I am. For me, I'm everywhere on well, whatever social network is always Frederick Van. So the only gating factor is you have to know how to spell Frederick correctly, and then you can Ooh. find me easy. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> so uh, that's cool, guys. This this has been a great show. Thank you both for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you, Frederick. Always All right. fun.
Yeah, and listeners, if you want to check out the new This Week in Photo website, just head over to thisweekinphoto.com. We've changed the whole thing around, as you heard earlier in the show, and I uh, would love some feedback on what you guys think of the new design, the new layout, the new shows, and all the cool stuff that's coming out from Twip Land. And with that, it is time to take that lens cap off. <laughs>